Lakeisha Moore. Um, thank you for joining me here in this space with my work. Uh, this show is called Life in Color. Um, I'm very excited to be sharing it with you. So some of the things that got me into art, uh, I'm, I'm the oldest of four, I'm the only girl, and my little brother um, asked me to draw something one day when I was in middle school, and from there I was kind of hooked. It started with the Lion King cartoons, um, but then also taking classes at, at Meg's Magnet School, uh, and then um, from there I continued the path with, with art. Some of my favorite forms kind of started actually with the Renaissance, Michelangelo, Da Vinci. I was always intrigued by their curiosity and also how they captured the figure, these robust full figures, but also the, the, the very gentle way with which Da Vinci handled atmosphere. Um, one of my favorite artists uh, today that I'm, I'm always going back to and learning from is Kerry James Marshall. Um, with his beautiful figures, large landscapes on the canvas, it, it takes you to another world and actually just shows this, this view of, of culture, black culture, that you don't often see. And so I really enjoy his work. The theme is color, so life in color. I have work that span from 12 to 15 years. Um, I have some pieces that are older, but then also with, with themes such as youth and innocence, resilience, and those themes kind of come back full circle 10 years later. So I kind of have a, a, a mix of portraits, a mix of figures in the landscape, but also abstract layers on the ground accompanied by a poem on the wall as well. So you can kind of in, engage in that space um, and, and, and think of your own experiences. To me, art is important because it's, it's definitely a form of expression, um, the visual form. It's a language that you choose uh, to express what you're feeling, what you're concerned about, what you're curious about. Um, and anyone can do it. Even though I've studied for a long time, I have friends who have just started, you know, and, and they found their creative voice and that outlet to, to really express what they want to share with the world. And I think that's important to, to, to be able to find that space where you can share in a way that is authentic to you. And that's what I, I found with my work. I've had the opportunity to train here for um, education conferences. I, I work at Tennessee State University, and so as an art educator, um, I love learning from other art, artists and art educators as well. And so um, finding out that there was a gallery in this space, I thought it was a great opportunity to show the broader community here in Murfreesboro and also those that travel um, some of my artwork, but then also engage in this discussion of, you know, how. How do you experience color? How do you experience paintings? Um, and, and, and how do you um, see that on a day-to-day -day basis and not just in a gallery? Because not everyone goes to a gallery, but this community center you know, has a, a great community of people that come together daily, and I think it's really beautiful, especially in the summer times. In the following three pieces, they're called Landscape One, Two, and Three. I was in graduate school making this work. Um, I was encouraged to step away from the figure. And in doing so, I discovered uh, this layering technique. Um, I, I started using watercolor along with the oil. Um, I was using tape, different strips of paper, just to try to get some type of atmosphere that I wanted. Um, along with that, I started writing um, a lot more and this these three pieces are accompanied by a poem, and it's called Being. Um, free, alive, everywhere, we escape temporary moments to find everlasting places where realities are created. We remember forgotten moments, and around each corner lies our truth, outlined and bathed with serenity. We foster a better sense of who we are and fashion visions of who we will be. Uh, so this idea of adding these layers, taking away these layers, um, are reflective of our experiences and how we move through life, um, sometimes smoothly, sometimes in a rough way, um, but through it all, we are, we are living in a beautiful landscape of our choices, of experiences, um, some things that we had a hand in, some things that we didn't necessarily have a hand in, but it's, a, it's about being, being present in the moment and being present in doing life. And so that's why I wanted to share these pieces um, because that is part of life, that's part of living in color. Um, moving through spaces in creative ways, um, figuring out how to do it and not knowing all the answers. So following graduate school and working on the layered landscapes and, and, and other um, types of pieces, I moved to the Caribbean. Um, I found out about a teaching job where I was teaching um, high school art 
and I was also a track and cross country coach. Um, being surrounded by the beautiful landscape, um, I was encouraged to go back to the figure, uh, seeing such beautiful people who were reflective of my own family members, reflective of my friends from home. Um, this became my home. Uh, this piece is called Promise, and it represents four generation of, of, of women starting from a little child, you know, and, and, and the arm of one female figure is holding the child. Uh, so just the, the, the idea that there's so much promise that, that we hold, so much potential, um, and, and that it is represented in all ages, all of us. Um, and being that these are women, I was kind of also rediscovering myself. You know, as a woman, I was surrounded by other women who were encouraging me, whether they were from church, from school. Um, and so I was, I was affirmed by all these strong, beautiful black women, you know, who were, who were standing with me, you know, by Angelo um, talks about how we are, are, are not alone. Um, not only our ancestors with us, but we also walk with, with those who have walked with us, who have shown us the way. And also they give us the space to figure that, that way out too. And so this, what, this is what this piece represents uh, for me. So the, the, the promise. How do we heal the nations? We take on what is life, love, and spirit. This is an oil on canvas. Um, this is one of my newest pieces. Uh, a while back, I was trying to figure out, you know, how we were all kind of dealing with, you know, being inside the changes, transition, death, um, healing that has taken place through this last year and a half or even longer. Um, and, but I, I couldn't push this piece out, but I, I, I heard a documentary um, that first started with Billie Holiday and it came from, they, they, they mentioned a scripture from Revelation 22 and that spoke about the tree that would heal the nations. And so I got to, I began thinking about the, this fruit, right? And, and I've, I've used the ginkgo fruit before in my earlier paintings from graduate school and also recently. And the, the um, representation of the ginkgo tree and the fruit for me, um, again, thinking about memory and life and flourishing through life, right? So this, this is, I wrote this, how do we heal the nation? So this, asking ourselves this question in, in terms of what, what do we need to do? What can we do on a day-to-day -day basis for ourselves, for each other? Um, we take on what is life, love, and spirit. And so by using the ginkgo fruit, actually I have, um, not only am I using the rays again, but I'm also, I, I have a, a, a faint image of the ankh in the, in the background, so it's more in that gold. And so, and, and, and it is symbolic for life. And so not just simply having the rays, but also using other symbols um, that are known symbols, comedic symbols even for, for life. Um, so this is what I was trying to kind of journey through with making this piece. It, it took a minute to, to come to, but then once I was ready for it, I was ready for it. So I think it, it speaks to the, 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 the process of making work um, as an artist. Sometimes it's not going to, to be as crystal clear. Um, it, it takes a moment you know, for you to, to find, that, find the pace and find, the, find the, the texture, find the color that you want um, and to build on the layers that you want to tell the story or to create the image. Um, and, and this was, for me, that piece that, that was a struggle to get out, you know, and I think it's also symbolic for this struggle that we've all been in, right? Um, trying to figure out how to do it. There's no one way, you know, that's worked for everyone, but we figure it out day by day. As a student at Washington University in St. Louis, I had the opportunity to travel abroad to Florence, Italy. Um, during one of our trips, we went to Siena. And during our trip there, we were walking through the streets and we, we happened upon a Pinocchio parade. And I love capturing those moments that we find that are just unbelievably poetic. And so in this case, I saw this little boy and he was wearing this red cape. You had all the parents surrounding the children. They were all excited, ecstatic. And, and here he is in a very calm, you know, kind of a low key demeanor. Um, I'm not sure if he wanted to be there or not, but it was just very interesting and I, I wanted to capture that when I came back home. And so this is one of the pieces that I did uh, during my uh, junior and senior year, actually my senior year as a student there. And um, I wanted to capture the light that I saw, especially the light in, um, 
in Italy, but also the light on his face, the light on the clothes. I wanted to capture the texture that I found from the photographic reference that I took. Um, and what prompted me uh, to paint children, especially during that time, is, the, is the, the fact that I am the oldest of four. I'm the only girl. I have three brothers. I love my brothers. Um, and they became um, the central focus of my work in undergrad, especially my junior and senior year. And um, they kind of prompted me to, to, to view all other um, youth, younger children, you know, to um, middle schoolers to high schoolers. And just this really interesting way, um, I, I began to, to try to think about how to capture um, their essence, uh, knowing that children do deal with a lot of, of, of things um, that sometimes don't seem to be fair, right? Um, but they also are able to take on life and just enjoy it. And they have this exuberance you know, that sometimes we wish we could recapture, right? So part of what I was doing was also trying to um, capture the moments, keep the moments, and also remember those moments, you know, for, for me as a young child, but also encourage someone else to, to, to remember that youth and innocence that we still have, but sometimes we want to cover it up. Um, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to be that youthful person or self um, because we're dealing with so many other things, right? And so I, I just, I am encouraged by children, um, their brightness, their view, outlook on life, um, and how um, they live and we can follow their leading, you know, as, as, a scripture, as the scripture says, a child shall lead them, right? And I think that's in a lot of cases. And so um, this young man is, is, is the, um, I saw something in this moment that I wanted to capture, so the red cape. <laughs>